Your attention please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. It is a windy day in the Bronx on the campus of Fordham University. But inside the Rose Hill Gym, the conditions, they are perfect for an A-10 matinee matchup. As the Yes Network presents Fordham Basketball. It's the Fordham Rams against the LaSalle Explorers from the Rose Hill Gym on the Bronx, New York. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside Robin Lumberg. Happy to bring you Fordham basketball this afternoon. You know, this season got off to a very promising start for Fordham. They had a winning non-conference record since they've kind of hit the skids. Lost six straight in Atlantic 10 play. For LaSalle, they have greatly exceeded expectations. Picked to finish 13th in the A-10. They are now just a half game out of third in the Atlantic 10. And for both of these teams, a player to watch who has exceeded expectations as well. For Fordham, center curve in Bristol. For LaSalle senior guard Earl Pettis. Bristol might be the most important player on the floor today, Ryan, because Fordham has the size advantage against LaSalle, and he's the biggest player out there. LaSalle, a great three-point shooting team. So on the defensive side of the ball, might be where Bristol is most important. Fordham going to have to close out on those three-point shooters. They may get dribble penetration. He is going to have to clean up the mess with block shots and rotations defensively. Meanwhile, for LaSalle, Earl Pettis has really improved this year, and he's one of the reasons they can play smaller. He can play multiple positions, sometimes plays the four spot for them. And how about improvement year to year? Nine points a game last year, 15 this year, including 33 against Temple. Oh, it's going to be a fun one. The A-10 season winding down. Both of these teams fighting for position in the conference. Fordham, LaSalle, it's up next right here on Yes. <laughs> got it so I'll get through all that if there's time before the tip then I'll tee you up for something if there's not we'll start action gotcha Today's game being brought to you by the Fordham Maroon Club, the official support group of Fordham Athletics. Learn more at Fordham.edu slash Maroon Club. By Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield, one of New York's leading health insurance providers for more than 75 years. And by Cirillo World, a leader in sports public relations and a proud sponsor of Fordham basketball. Better branding, great awareness, Cirillo World. Fordham, LaSalle getting ready to do battle in the Bronx. Time to bring you the starting lineups. Brought to you by Cirillo World. For Fordham, that backcourt of Brandon Frazier and Devon McMillan. Frontcourt, Brian Smith, the freshman. Kirvin Bristol, the senior at the center position. And, of course, Chris Gaston, the star for Fordham, the junior forward. For the LaSalle Explorers, 18-10 and 10 on the season and 7-6 and six in the conference. A backcourt of Tyreek Duran and Sam Mills. They play four guards, really. Earl Pettis, Ramon Galloway, and the lone forward is Jarrell Wright. LaSalle is led by head coach John Giannini. Dr. John Giannini in his eighth season said his team only exceeded expectations of those who picked him 13th. He thought this team was capable of what they are doing this year. Meanwhile, for Fordham, 
They are led by Tom Pecora, who is in his second season at the helm, trying to get the Fordham Rams to still fight their way into the A-10 tournament. Right now, they're on the outside looking in. Would need to win two and George Washington to lose their final three in order to get in. The officials for today's game, Frankie Bordeaux, Quentin Murphy, and Joe DeMeo. Gaston and Wright to jump, a double hit, but LaSalle controls. Fordham, the first team ever to use the three-point shot in an NCAA game. Ironically, LaSalle, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. Something to watch out for today. LaSalle, first in the A-10 in three-point percentage, fifth in the nation. Turnover there from Galloway, who's one of those excellent three-point shooters. Meanwhile, for Fordham, Robin, Coach Pecora seemed confident that they would be able to use their interior players, and that was something that Dr. John Giannini was worried about as well. Yes, he, he called Chris Gaston a problem. We'll see if Gaston is problematic on the boards and in the interior against the South. McMillan's pass knocked away. Still plenty of time on the shot clock as Frazier dumps it in for Gaston, gets position. That's an easy two. He was crushing, I guess, uh, Coach Giannini, because right away, Frazier with a good entry pass over the top of the fronting defender to Gaston, finishes it strong. Chris Gaston, a double-double machine, 15 of them out of 25 games this year. He has 51 in his career as Duran's pass is knocked away by Frazier, controlled by Wright, though, who swoops in for two. An unfortunate possession there for Fordham because they did everything right, almost forced back-to-back -back turnovers. Frazier just not able to corral the basketball, and it leads to two points. Fordham has lost six straight, coming off a loss Wednesday against St. Bonaventure. Gaston kick out Smith into the corner. There you see where Gaston could be really effective as well. The attention he's drawing from the defense. It didn't result in an open shot there, but it did result in the, the collapsing of the defense, and he was able to kick it out effectively. McMillan airballed it, but it last hit LaSalle, and it will stay with Fordham. Well, that was one of the things Tom Pecora's team saw against St. Bonaventure. Not only did they shoot very poorly, under 20% from three, but they didn't have open threes because St. Bonaventure had those kind of interior players they can rely on. Perhaps LaSalle will have to give that extra attention to Gaston to create those open shots as Fordham turns it over. And it makes the game a lot easier. We were talking to Coach Giannini for LaSalle before the game, and he mentioned it's not like his guys are better shooters this year. They're getting better shots, and therefore the, the field goal percentage goes up because they're in rhythm catching shoot opportunities. LaSalle was picked to finish 13th in the conference, but right now just a half game out of third as Wright working on Bristol, puts it in with the left hand. The problem there wasn't Bristol's defense on the ball. What happened was Wright was able to establish position far too deep in the paint, and it made the shot much easier once he did catch it. Now it's poked away from Smith, last touched him out of bounds, and another turnover. Mills forced it. Here's the replay right there. As you see, look where he catches the ball right. Able to just put one dribble and go up for the layup. you got to make him catch it a little bit further out so he's more uncomfortable. Well, that was something that Coach Pecora thought was a problem against St. Bonaventure as well. Their bigs kept catching it too deep, too close to the hoop. Another turnover for Galloway. His second in the early going. Promising start for Fordham with the turnovers because this is a guard-heavy LaSalle team. They should be taking care of the basketball better. They play their best guys, so that winds up with a smaller lineup, but you would think the guards wouldn't be careless with the basketball. Well, Galloway gets the early hook as DJ Peterson comes in for LaSalle. LaSalle with the early 4-2 lead on Fordham. 17-40 left in this opening half. The freshman McMillan, Frankie Frazier. Nice pressure on the ball by LaSalle, but Fordham exposes it getting inside to Gaston. If, you, if you're too aggressive, sometimes the over-pursuit can lead to somebody being open, and it was Gaston that time, and he's the guy Fordham wants to get the ball to. And the guy that LaSalle is worried about, Gaston, with Fordham's first four points. Right, backing down Bristol. Deflected pass out, right back in. Pettis swoops in for two. Again, the same thing that happened before where the position is there for them deep inside on the catch. Not much happening to be done once they receive the ball. Smith looking into gas to try to force it in there. And Peterson was on the baseline, so it will stay with Fordham. Dr. John Giannini wanted his player to stay in bounds on that. Brian Smith, the freshman, forcing some things early 
for Fordham. And Tom Picard told us before the game that he had to talk with Smith a little bit after Wednesday's game where he went 0 for 10. Said, stay confident, keep shooting. Notice how many defenders were around Gaston on the baseline there. They are paying extra attention to him. Two around him now underneath as Frazier pulls up and connects from three. Makes the game easier when one guy is drawing a lot of the attention. The ball comes out, Frazier has an open look, doesn't hesitate, cans it. Meanwhile, Wright can't get the roll, but will head to the line for two. Here's the replay of that Frazier three. Look, he comes around the screen, steps right into the shot, knocks it down. Frazier had a rough shooting performance on Wednesday. It was just one of eight from deep. He was another guy who Coach Pecora talked to and said, look, keep shooting, keep shooting. I'm confident in you. You need to remain confident. And a lot of these guys just aren't used to losing. So they can lose their confidence in their shot as the season goes along. Nothing you want to feel less than being overwhelmed out on the court. And these guys are used to overwhelming their opponents, you know, in high school and things like that. You get to the next level, it's an adjustment period, but you want to make sure you're prepared for it mentally and don't let it swallow you, swallow you up. Gaston right in, puts it in, and the foul! Chris Gaston with six points in the early going and a chance to make it seven as he heads to the line. You get the sense Chris Gaston realizes the opportunity he can seize here. He's very active in this game and it's versatile play right there, being able to put the ball on the floor. Look at that. The defender comes out, puts it on the floor, gets to the hole, and too deep to take the charge, so he's on the free throw line. Gaston can't connect from there. Rebound tipped around. Gaston comes away with a loose ball. Puts it right back up and in. Eight early points for Chris Gaston, and Fordham with the 11-8 lead. Gaston clearly the best player on the floor so far. Chris Gaston averaging 16 and a half points, nearly 10 rebounds per game. Bristol the box out and rebound. That's the kind of shot you want them taking. Now that's a long two, it's contested, a difficult shot, you live with the results. Samuel had it poked away from behind by Galloway. Heels back out, did not have the numbers. Mills right around Bristol, that's a nice move from Sam Mills. And that's the matchup you don't want if you're Fordham. Bristol switching over to a guard who, with a quick crossover, gets right to the rim. And once again, the pressure from Galloway forces a Fordham turnover. Lamont Samuel coughs it up, but Tom Pecora's team off to a good start. Leading LaSalle 11-10, and Chris Gaston hot in the early going on yes. Chris Gaston able to put it on the floor, finishes it strong. Giants for bringing the Lombardi Trophy to Rose Hill today. The Lombardi Trophy in the house, courtesy of the Giants here at Fordham. Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield is happy to support Fordham basketball. Empire has been proud to partner with Fordham University for over 15 years to deliver quality health benefits to Fordham's employees. Empire is one of New York's leading health insurance providers. With more than 75 years of history in the New York market, Empire is committed to promoting health and wellness 
and giving back to the communities we serve. That is why Empire is happy to support today's event, showcasing the talents of these young athletes. 15-22 to go in the first half. Fordham out to an 11-10 lead on LaSalle. You know, Tom Pecora had a list of goals before this season. Three things. Have a winning record at home. Check. Even if Fordham lost out, they would accomplish that goal. Have a winning record out of conference. They were 7-6. and six. Check on that. And then make the A-10 tournament, which Fordham has not done the last three seasons. Now, it's going to be difficult for them to, to accomplish that last one, but still on the table if they could find a way to beat LaSalle today. They then play Rhode Island, who they've already beaten this year and is last in the conference. And then Temple the final week as Galloway cans a three. George Washington has a two-game advantage on Fordham for that final spot in the conference, but Fordham does have the tiebreaker over GW. Well, two out of three ain't bad, but the third one still very possible for them, and, and this win would go a long way. And, and competitive early on, as you've seen Fordham attack the hoop like they just did there. Nice lob. Bristol slams it home. Kervin Bristol really has developed nicely this season become a much more offensive player and McMillan with a nice feed there as Pettis short on the three rebound tipped around McMillan dives for it and it's going to be a jump ball with the arrow headed Fordham's way. Gaston makes an impact on the box score all the time points and rebounds you see that right there he closed out on the shooter nice defensive play here on the other end McMillan drives and a great touch pass up in the air to Bristol who puts it down with both hands. It's nice to have a guy with that kind of size and that kind of leaping ability. Fordham LaSalle tied at 13 in this first half. Bristol will take it from there. That's a little out of his range, but Gaston fights for the board. Gaston forces it up. No, another offensive board. Toss into Gaston playing volleyball using the height. Forces it up, bucket and the foul for Chris Gaston, who is motoring early on. He has 10 points in the first five plus minutes. It's not just a size advantage for Fordham, it's a pronounced size advantage. You can see the guards, they're basically just tossing the ball in the air because they know if they put it up high enough with enough, enough touch, their guy's going to get it. And some nice touch by Gaston here once he does get it for the and one. Second time he's headed to the charity stripe following a bucket. This time he completes it, Chris Gaston. 11 points already. Dr. John Giannini, the head coach of LaSalle, said Chris Gaston could be a problem. Could very much be a problem today for LaSalle. He has been in the early going. LaSalle plays a four-guard lineup, sometimes even five guards. Well, Coach uh, Giannini told us he plays his best guys, and that's the kind of advantage you get by playing guards. A three-point shot right there from the ball movement, and that's something Fordham can't really match up with. The size advantage their way, the quickness and handling ability will go to LaSalle. Durin on the three, ties it at 16. Gaston still looking for the ball inside, drawing two defenders underneath. Estwick fires. And a rebound right for LaSalle. You know when you play pickup hoops, there's that guy who wants the ball every time. Gaston wants the ball every time, correctly so, against this team. Galloway a little bit long. Here's McMillan for Fordham. Fordham 7 of 11 in the early going. LaSalle shooting well also, 6 of 9. Gaston gets position again, goes up strong again, makes again. Good play by Frazier there. LaSalle knows that they have a size disadvantage, so what they're trying to do is front Gaston in the post. Frazier waited for that front to go away, fed it inside, and when you front and the pass is completed, you're automatically in bad position. And then on the other end, you see the size advantage at play. Bristol swatting away a would-be field goal attempt. Curve in Bristol, third in the Atlantic 10 in blocks. And that's an easy one for him. I mean, he almost could have cuffed that and, and brought it into his chest if he wanted to. Galloway. Looking at Ryan Canty. Just checked into the game for Fordham. Good pass from Galloway. And the put home from right. A no look from Galloway. Shuffle pass inside and an effective one. A lot of offensive rhythm for both teams in the early going. Gaston. He is feeling it. The turnaround a little short that time. Gaston has been very effective in this game. That play, perhaps the worst possession he's had thus far, trying to create off the dribble when he should let the game come to him. Obviously, he has 
dominated play thus far. Duran on the three, and Tyreek Duran, who has vastly improved his three-point shooting this year. Now, LaSalle has four players who shoot better than 40% from three. Duran is one of them. Last year, he was just a 32% three-point shooter. The three-point shot is a, a terrific weapon. You can combat threes with twos. That's the first time they were able to thwart Gaston in the post. McMillan penetrating. Good feed to Canty. Can't finish. Gaston, no. Another try. Yes. Chris Gaston again. 15 points. Not even halfway through the first half. The effort there by Gaston. The, the second leap was quick, and he was able to tip it back in. Galloway using the white screen. Takes it back to White, errantly saved by Duran. Smith has it, down court to Estwick. One hop to the rim for the finish. Estwick doing a nice job there, using his body as a shield, very composed. Put the ball on the floor, protected it with the other side of his torso, went up strong. Fordham with the 22-21 lead on LaSalle inside 11 minutes left in this first half. Duran, good feed inside. White gets hacked going up. And Devin White will head to the line for two. Timeout on the floor. 10.50 left in this first half. Sharp shooting early on. And you see what happens because of this kind of three-point shooting. A defensive breakdown for Fordham on that last play. But here is Gaston just relentless attacking the glass. And Eswick with the finish in transition. Fordham rolling early. At the heart of one of the fiercest rivalries in sports, Hall of Famers Irvin Magic Johnson and Larry Bird reinvigorated the NBA and turned their rivalry into the greatest and most famous friendship in professional sports. With classic NBA footage shown throughout, Magic Bird on Broadway takes you from draft to Olympic dream team. For more information, visit magicbirdbroadway.com. Come relive the rivalry live. Fordham with a 22-21 lead on LaSalle, 10.50 to go in the first half, and Chris Gaston has done everything early on, Robin. Well, pick your poison defense right here. They try to front him, the pass is complete, he finishes it. They try to play him straight up in the post, he just goes over them, and then just overwhelms them with his ability to put the ball on the floor and finish the basket. Chris Gaston, 15 points, four rebounds early on for Fordham. So, Robin, when we talk to Dr. John Janini, the head coach of LaSalle, he used the word problem to describe Chris Gaston and what he would be for LaSalle today. And Tom Pecora thought this was one of those games where Chris Gaston could go off as well because LaSalle doesn't have that prototypical forward to body up with him. And you could tell, talking to coach or, or doctor, it's got to be good to be doctor and coach so people can it's refer to you high, don't as those that. things. But you could tell he was legitimately worried about how they would match up with Gaston today. Haven't been able to so far, but LaSalle still with the 23-22 lead. Three of five from deep in the early going is LaSalle. Gaston this time pushed around the perimeter. Nice job by Gaston there. You, you don't want to get ahead of yourself because you've been so effective. He's letting the offense take care of itself. Gaston putting it on the floor. Looking inside, settles for Smith. Seven to shoot. Smith lets it fly. Got it! That's a big shot for Fordham right there because they didn't get what they wanted out of that offensive possession, but it resulted in, in three points. 
Brian Smith was 0 of 7 from 3 on Wednesday. Tom Pecor said keep shooting. Mills will as well, and that one rattles home. LaSalle will not be a team <laughs> that's going to be too cold from the outside for very long, and they're showing why they're the fifth best three-point shooting team in the country. First in the A-10, and the differences are overwhelming. In their 18 wins, they shoot 45% from three, and their 10 losses, 35%, and they're four of six in the early going, four and two of three. Smith putting it on the floor. Step back three. That one's offline. And Gaston had the rebound poked away. LaSalle has numbers. Here's Durant flying in, blocked away, but a foul. Good foul there by Fordham. Dern with a nice decision with the basketball, decides to take it to the hole, but make him earn both of these shots. And here you see it. You know, you, when you're gonna foul in this situation, you have to make sure he doesn't make the shot. That's the most important thing about it. And they did a good job there with the clean foul, but a hard foul. Tyreek Duran, sixth in the A-10 in free throw percentage, hits the first as Kervin Bristol checks back in for Fordham. Fordham with a lot of young guards, freshmen, sophomores. The one thing they will miss after this season is the size of Bristol. Been an anchor for that defense, and they only got two years out of him transferring here for his junior and senior seasons. Had a very nice impact on Fordham this season. It makes your life a lot easier as a defender because you know he is back there. For instance, you can follow the scouting report instead of trying to contain somebody totally if their weakness is going left you force them left and you know Bristol's behind you if they beat you and closing out on three-point shooters the same thing you can close out hard because Bristol's back there another offensive board for Gaston Fordham resetting McMillan using the Gaston screen penetration pass knocked away still plenty of time to shoot McMillan cutting in, blocked from behind. Galloway saved it. Who will control? LaSalle will, and a timeout taken by the Explorers. Good hustle there, getting on the floor after Gaston earned Fordham another extra possession. I know it's not factually correct, but it seems like he has every rebound in this game. <laughs> Here's McMillan driving to the hole, and a clean block up top by Galloway, denying the shot and securing the possession. That, that's one thing sometimes too often guys will block a shot out of bounds and while that looks good it doesn't get you the basketball right there LaSalle is able to deny the shot and get the possession. Tuesday night catch a new Yankees baseball daily for the latest news and updates from Tampa with spring training underway our experts break down the roster and analyze what lies ahead for the Bombers. It's a new Yankees baseball daily Tuesday at 7 only on ES. Hey there's a Yankee hat. That's right. Never seen one of those before. Yeah, that's not the most popular lid in the world. Yankees pitchers and catchers started workouts this week. Position players all pretty much got there yesterday, starting their workouts as well. LaSalle with the three-point lead on Fordham. Eight minutes, 45 seconds left in this opening half. Fordham trying to snap a six-game losing streak. Backed right into the paint. White can't finish, though, on the rebound, Bristol. Good positioning, but not very good touch on that shot opportunity. McMillan looking inside for Gaston. White working hard on him. McMillan will take it instead. And a box out by Wright. Gaston's forced to change for LaSalle here. White, not one of the guys who gets a ton of the minutes for LaSalle, but he has to play out of necessity today. Galloway, got it! The second best three-point shooter in the Atlantic 10. And LaSalle using the three early on. They have five of them and a six-point lead. It's really what's keeping them in the game right now. Fordham would be running away with this one if it weren't for the three-point shot. And as it is, they're trailing. Gaston draws two, finds Bristol. Lost the ball going up for the dunk. And it's out of bounds. It will stay with Fordham. Gaston had retreated, thinking that the basketball was lost. But instead, Fordham gets the ball back. Galloway hitting everything early on. Well, Galloway sees they're giving him the space. He takes it three. 